tornadoes, more specifically F and EF5 tornadoes. Globally, 57 F5s have occurred with 9 EF5s. All 9 EF5s occurred in the U.S., with 50 F5s also occurring in the U.S. Two F5s have struck both France and Germany. Italy has had one F5, and so has Russia. The last F5 outside of the U.S. occurred in Canada on June 22, 2007, near the small Manitoba town of Eli. This tornado would not only make history, but would intrigue and perplex many researchers and weather enthusiasts, as it left behind one of the most erratic tornado paths in history, alongside incredibly strange sequences of damage. It's a day seemingly more known by Americans than Canadians, due to an overall lack of interest in weather in Canada. So in this video, we'll dive into the meteorology behind Canadian tornadoes, the meteorological setup, the tornado, and its aftermath. Before diving into the Eli event, you need to first understand the meteorology behind Canadian tornadoes. Looking at a map of Canadian tornadoes, you'll notice that there are two areas where basically all of the tornadoes occur in Canada, southern Ontario and Quebec, and Canada's prairie provinces. In Ontario and Quebec, tornadoes usually form in the late spring through summer, as warm, moist air reaches up through Ontario and into Quebec, providing ample instability. Many cold fronts and troughs also swing through southern Ontario and Quebec, providing lift for storms which sometimes begin to rotate. Several more factors go into tornado genesis in the two provinces, but most times during the summer, several weak EF0 to EF2 tornadoes will touch down. In severe cases, like the May 31, 1985 tornado outbreak that occurred in the northeast U.S. and also into southern Ontario, severe tornadoes are often spawned from an outbreak in the U.S. that also tracks through Ontario. Westward, in the prairie provinces consisting of Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and Alberta, tornadoes are more frequent and much more severe than those in Ontario and Quebec, often brought on by low-pressure systems combining with climbing moisture from the U.S. during the summer, the prairies act like a way weaker and less severe Great Plains. Many supercells form throughout the summer here, dropping some of the most photogenic tornadoes ever. So hopefully with that, you have a decent grasp of Canadian tornadoes. The setup on June 22, 2007 was conducive to a major severe weather event in southern Manitoba. A low pressure system came in from Saskatchewan through the day, and then moved over southern Manitoba throughout the evening. Very warm air was situated over southern Manitoba that day as temperatures climbed into the high 20s or low 80s Fahrenheit. The humidity was also very high, with dew points ranging from 18 to 22 degrees Celsius, or 64 to 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Strong wind shear was present, reflected in high helicity values. The stage was set for supercells, and they developed within the warm sector located in the Red River Valley and areas farther west. At 5.40 p.m. Central Daylight Time, two supercells would develop and rapidly grow and intensify. At 6.25 p.m. Central Daylight Time, one of those supercells would drop a tornado near the Trans-Canada Highway, a tornado that will make history. The tornado initially touched down north of the Trans-Canada Highway around 6.25 p.m. Central Daylight Time and slowly moved southeast where it picked up and overturned a semi-trailer and a tractor trailer. The tornado slowly turned east, took a sharp turn south, and then took another sharp turn east, all within roughly one mile. The tornado made another turn south and made an extremely slow loop over the town's flour mill at F2 intensity, causing over a million dollars in damage. Multiple semi-trucks were overturned and damaged, and building walls buckled inward. At this point, the tornado was producing F1 to F2 level damage, and had grown to a width of around 50 meters. From here, it headed south, parallel to Jansen Road at F0 intensity. It also continued to grow, and reached its peak width of about 140 meters. After reaching the intersection of Jensen Road and Road 61 North, the tornado turned east directly towards the southwest edge of Eli. At this point, however, the tornado shrunk dramatically as it entered the final phase of its life. In an incredible feat, the tornado rapidly intensified to F4 in the blink of an eye while it made a loop over Eli Street, striking the first homes at the absolute height of its power. Here it damaged a dozen homes and destroyed four houses, including one which was described as a well-built and bolted to its foundation, being lifted completely off its foundation and thrown into the air where it broke apart, justifying F5 intensity. This can all be seen on video. The tornado lingered over this area of Eli for approximately four minutes before it exited Eli to the southwest and rapidly dissipated. The tornado had only tracked six kilometers and only reached a max width of 140 meters wide, yet it still obliterated several homes and ruined dozens of lives. 
Unfortunately, the people in ELI were prepared and took the necessary precautions during the event, except for some people who decided to pose in the street in front of the tornado. But still, no one was injured or killed during the storm. The following day, Environment Canada sent out a storm damage survey team from the Prairie and Arctic Storm Prediction Center to assess the damage caused by the tornado. On September 18th, 2007, the tornado was upgraded to F5 on the Fujita scale from the original F4 based on video analysis of the tornado and reassessment of the damage. This was the first tornado in Canada to be officially rated as such, making it the strongest confirmed tornado in Canadian history. Past the obvious freaky nature of the path, the fact that the tornado was roping out yet intensifying so greatly is incredibly intriguing. Thank you for watching. I know I haven't uploaded in a really long time. I've been really busy with school and other things that are finally beginning to clear up, giving me plenty of time to upload and plenty of newborn motivation that will all be devoted to video creation. Um, goodbye, have a nice rest of your day.